All right, so in this video, I have the brand new Nike Air Vapor Max 2020 Flyknit, and this is kind of a different version of the Vapor Max that we've seen in the last couple of years. They've actually made quite a few changes to the model, so I wanted to give you guys a detailed look and review of the new shoes. Yo, what is going on guys? Hess here, collectivekicks.com. If you guys would like to shop this week's top sneaker deals that I post for you guys, check the link in the description. Take you over to Nike and Adidas and all of the other sites that I promote. And if you guys are interested in buying a pair of these, also I will post them to eBay and StockX as well as Nike. There's a, some future releases that are actually coming out uh, of these as well. The ones that I got right here are actually sold out. So the box is kind of crazy. I'll show you the box more in detail in a second. But inside you can see they actually are doing a couple things different. One, there's no paper. I think overall Nike wants to reduce this carbon footprint with the shoes that they're uh, producing which is exactly what they are saying on the box. It says they want to move to zero. This product is made with at least 50% recycled content by weight which reduces waste and our carbon footprint. So that's kind of the concept behind what they're doing with the new Vapor Max 2020. Move to zero is Nike's journey towards zero carbon and zero waste to help protect the future of sports. So if you're confused on what they're trying to do and why it looks the way it is, I think that they spell it out pretty clear, which is something that I really actually appreciate it because a lot of times I think that uh, companies forget the narrative like when they're actually promoting like a product that is supposed to be better for the environment. I think the Adidas Parlay stuff has been saturated so much to the point where they forget their narrative on that as well, which they've been doing the same thing for years. And the Parley or Parlay Ultra Boost is just one of those shoes that should have caught more of a wave because they definitely tout the recycled materials on those shoes as well, at least from the uppers. And that's kind of similar to what Nike has done with this. It's a recycled polyester, but they're also going a couple steps further. So they're basically taking parts of waste from other sneakers that Nike has created. And they're creating like a rubber for the outsole and like a fused together foam as well for some sort of padding. They also have that same vibe for the insoles of the shoes as well. So they're definitely going above and beyond recycling some of this stuff and reusing it to new sneakers that you see right here instead of just throwing it away, which I think is probably a smart move overall. From Nike's word, it says the Nike Air Vapor Max 2020 Flyknit offers more than innovative. The design represents our next steps towards a more sustainable future. By incorporating waste saving methods and materials like Nike Grind in the outsole and recycled polyester yarns, each and every pair is made of at least 50% recycled content by weight. And as we push footwear to the future, we want all athletes to come along for the ride. Featuring our laceless fly ease technology, the VaporMax 2020 comes ingeniously equipped with a convenient one-handed lock and release mechanism for a truly exclusive fit. Is it a bit gimmicky? Yes and no. I mean, you're paying a premium price. These are 220 now. The original Flyknit VaporMax released in 2017, which is crazy. It's been three years since these came out, but these released for $190. So three years later, and we're looking at $30 more for primarily recycled shoe, at least 50% of the shoe is recycled. It is a little bit crazy that the cost is a little bit more for a recycled product versus a new one, but honestly, I guess that's the cost of actually reducing and reusing. So it's not really a cost savings to us. However, you can feel better about the fact that you bought something that was recycled, which is something that I actually think is pretty cool. Now I will do a full comparison between this one and the Flyknit version, as well as the 2019 version in a different video. Honestly, there's a lot of talking points when you're looking at these two shoes side by side, and I didn't want to detract from what the narrative of the 2020 was supposed to be. So expect a review video on these uh, in the near future. Subscribe if you guys actually want to see that comparison because honestly, there's quite a few differences, way more than I would have anticipated. So when the first images of these came out, I was actually really excited to see, as with any new launch project from Nike, I'm always on board. I always want to see what they're offering, see if it's better than the previous year, see if the recycled materials feel good on feet, and how does it look in hand and all those other things. And my initial impressions of the shoe is, I like the look of the shoe. I think that it matches the images. If you get caught up with that luster of like, cool, they recycled some stuff. Like I like the upper, the knit upper feels really nice even though it's recycled uh, fly knit. I like the marbled look around the heel counter and how it says Vapor Max on the back. The branding is a little bit bolder back here. And honestly, the thing that I was most excited to see was the lacing system because they definitely went down and did something totally different with this with a fly ease system. It says lock on the back and it says release on the tongue. So in order to lace these down, you actually pull here and it cinches down the laces up here and you can hear it and you can see it actually cinched down, uh, which I thought was kind of cool. I like the concept of that. However, it's a little bit clunky to be honest. The lock mechanism works really well, but the release 
is tricky. I don't know how to describe it. If you pull too hard though, like this is like a really cheap plastic cover. I'm actually really skeptical to see how this little fly is box lasts over time. And you guys can fact check me in the comment section though. If you guys buy these, check back in a couple months and let people know how this little uh, device here treats you. Is it something that is gonna be breaking a lot? Are they gonna get a lot of returns on these? Because again, it just feels pretty cheap. That being said, the lock mechanism is actually pretty cool. You can see that it actually comes out and pulls like this. And I, I actually really like that. I think that that's pretty functional. And when you have these on your feet, you can feel it cinch down. But I will say that when you do lock them down on feet, it doesn't lock down evenly across your foot. It usually locks down on the first couple top section right here, but the bottom doesn't lock down at all. So it doesn't lock evenly across my foot at least. Maybe I just have too wide of a foot. But uh, but yeah, it was kind of a pain uh, and I just wanted to clarify that. I'm just trying to keep it honest. I paid my money for these. Nike never sent me these things. I do like what Nike's doing and, and as much as I sound harsh and critical, like there's definitely a really cool wow factor with what they're doing in this shoe. Like even the insoles, like these are like recycled insoles and it looks cool. And I like the fact that you could see like little micro dots of different colors on the insoles with that regrind. And then on the insole, you can see a little pinwheel of Nike swooshes. Some people actually don't know that those are actually Nike swooshes in a circle, but that's what it is. It does have a detached tongue and you can see the laces partly uh, underneath the shoe down here. There's also some extra padding inside the shoe that actually extends pretty far forward in the shoe. And honestly, I was like, this is really weird and cheap feeling because it's a little bit flimsy. But when you look at it up close and you fold the flaps down, you get it. That's actually how the lacing system works with this part back here. As you pull, it pulls down on that one little string and then tightens up the entire shoe. So I like that they're using a different system there. But again, I don't know, man, long term, I don't see it lasting. The upper is kind of like a dingy gray. And if you look really closely, you can see that it's kind of like a dingy a melting pot of colors and then they have different lines of colors as well throughout the shoe There's a purple fused overlay around the heel of the shoe and the extra little support that kind of comes all the way up to the midfoot of the shoe this blue marbled plastic material is actually pretty interesting. It feels like it's made from like a recycled plastic as well. It's pretty firm, but there's definitely some flex in the heel section of the shoe. You do have a little Nike swoosh and Vapor Max across the back. One thing that I like about the design with the Nike Air swoosh on the side, it's kind of like a bunch of different mini dots that connect together and make that black Nike swoosh along the side, which I like. I'm surprised that they didn't do it on the other side of the shoe though. It would have been more consistent with the other pairs. As you can see, they have the Nike swoosh on both sides. So it does look a little bit bare on one side where there's no Nike branding. So one thing about the VaporMax that was pretty revolutionary back in the day and continues to evolve is this crazy VaporMax outsole. Now the VaporMax is an upper paired with an outsole. There's no actual midsole to the VaporMax. It's actually just an air unit midsole outsole, I guess, if you want to call it that. So that's why it was kind of dope back in the day of like the idea of just walking on air. There's no midsole in the shoe. If you pull out this liner of the shoe though and you feel on the bottom of this midsole, it's super rough. You could feel all of the little bulges of the bottom of the outsole of the shoe. Because of the strobel down here being different than the previous ones, there's not as much padding down here either. I would say that this is definitely feels like a pretty rough ride. You have to have an insole on these, otherwise this is a no-go. Obviously, most people are gonna wear the VaporMax with an insole, but just wanted to throw that out there and let you know that it's pretty rough on the inside of these shoes. Way more rough than I thought. And it feels like the Strobel is actually cheaper made than the previous models. Now the VaporMax outsole as we know it actually has changed completely. They change the pattern layout of the bottom of the shoe and it's totally different than the previous model. They actually went from five different segments on the original VaporMax and this one actually has four different segments with the biggest one looking sort of like a number two down here as it zigzags across. So it really, it kind of looks like an exaggerated number two and then you have a small C, small C and a small C versus the other VaporMax you had a circle, 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 C and then a U on the bottom. You can tell I've been working with my kid on his letters and stuff right now. But this is definitely different than the previous. And I'll get more into the differences that I can find comparison to the previous VaporMax. On feet, I'd have to say they're okay. If you don't like the original VaporMax, I don't think you're gonna like these, obviously, because it's pretty much the same thing. It's just a different layout. However, it's still a really interesting, clunky sort of feel on feet. There's nothing about that heel toe transition that feels nice and like react or like boost or anything else that's like a foam midsole. This is totally different, obviously, because it's air. Like the whole midsole is a bunch of different air units. So it does feel pretty unstable for those that aren't familiar with the original Vapor Max. Like I didn't feel very stable on feet at all and you definitely clickety clack clunky feel. I think that if you want a big crazy looking air unit, you go with the 720s or the 270s. That's probably why they didn't want to expand this and make it too much bigger or wider because then you have kind of a pick and choose sort of thing. If you want ridiculously big and wide, go with the 720s. If you want something that's a little bit more sleek looking, 
then the Vapor Max might be a better option. I do like the sleeker look, but I do like more of a stable feel than what these offer. As for size of the shoe, I went true to size with a 9.5 for myself. However, I will say that they do fit pretty snug. If I had to do it again, I'd probably get a size 10 just to make it a little bit more looser on my feet. Personally, I just like a looser feel on feet, but the 9.5 fits just fine. If you just have a wider foot though, I would definitely want to try them out before you buy them or consider buying them a half size up. Anyways, my overall thoughts on the new Vapor Max 2020s. I think they look cool. I like the idea of the recycled content. I don't love the lockdown of the laces. Personally, I just, it didn't work for me the way that I would have liked. Because of all this recycled plastic that they added towards the heel of the shoe, this is actually pretty heavy. It's not as light as the previous versions. Despite the comfort not being my favorite and the lockdown not being my favorite, I like the look of the shoe. I think the coloring is cool. I actually really like the lock mechanism of the shoe. It looks cool how you can pull back on that. However, I don't like the release mechanism. I don't think that this is very functional. It just doesn't work very well with me. Maybe I'm just the one that doesn't understand how to use it. The marbled plastic to the recycled polyester, I think looks cool. And I do like that they redesigned the Vapor Max outsole. I will deep dive compare in another video how I like the Vapor Max outsole comparison to the previous version. But all in all, 220, hefty price, 250 is a no-go for me. There is a USA colorway coming out that's that 250 price, so I'm kind of wondering about that. Like, there's no way I'm paying 250 for these. 220 was more than enough. Personally, I think they should have stayed down at that 190 price. Like the Adidas Ultra Boost uh, parlays, they dropped for 180, and that's what the regular Ultra Boost is. So I would have liked to see these at that 190 price point. But it is what it is. When you have a company like Nike that creates a ton of volume, the fact that they're releasing product lines with recycling in mind, I think is pretty awesome. The last thing I wanted to note though is the colorways for the 2020 Flyknits. I'm curious to what they're gonna do with that. You can only do so much to pick and choose design colors with uh, recycled materials. So I'm not sure if we're gonna see a ton of different colorways or if they're just gonna be kind of small variations, like a Yeezy effect of small variations of different colors versus like completely different black and white and red different colors of the Vapor Max. So who, who knows what they're gonna do with that. Also, I don't know if the Vapor Max 2020 is exclusively being made with recycled materials or if they're gonna have a Vapor Max 2020 Flyknit or regular version that doesn't have recycled materials. I think that they would have to have both product offerings, but I guess we'll see as the uh, the year unfolds. Anyways, what do you guys think about the Vapor Max 2020 Flyknits? Uh, is it something you guys picked up? Yes or no on these, leave a comment and let me know. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Again, subscribe for the comparison to the OGs and the 2019s. Hit that notification bell if you guys wanna be notified of when those videos are live. If you guys enjoyed this video, if it was informative to you guys, and you guys appreciate the honesty of the video at least, uh, drop a like on the video. And hopefully you guys have a good rest of the day out there. We'll see you guys hopefully for some more sneaker videos soon. Peace guys.